I recently got my modern turned 1550 lathe up and going. Had some minor issues in the main gearbox, and this was just full of trash, like peanut butter and nasty stuff. But anyways, I've got it all cleaned out, all the oils changed, everything set, and I decided that I was going to try to do, for my first project, fix my old Monarch lathe and do a bit of threading on this one and just sort of, you know, get to know this machine. So I figured threading would be a good way of doing that. And I was completely stumped by the threading dial on this machine. I've used other machines and I've been kind of okay with how the threading dial works, but this machine it didn't make any sense to me. And I'll show you why in a second. But it also made me realize how, but in realizing why this threading dial is wrong, because it's wrong for sure, it really made me do a deep dive into how threading dials are supposed to work and what they actually do and how they work. And I have a really solid understanding of it now and I wanted to share that with you guys. So hopefully it'll help somebody. The threading dial keeps track as a relationship of the carriage to the lead screw, where it is in relation to the two of them. Now, as I move this along, it'll move, in, anyways, let's see. So, first thing we need to figure out is how far one full revolution of this is. So, right now I've got just a ruler up here, it's one, two, three, four inches marked out, and I've got this set on the one. So now I'm going to move this one full revolution and we'll see how far it comes out on the ruler, how far it moves. So that's one inch. Two inches is halfway around. Three inches is there. And a complete turn is four inches. So one full revolution of my threading dial is four inches of travel for the carriage up here. Now why this threading dial doesn't make any sense is because we're dividing, there's six divisions on here, so we're dividing four inches in to six divisions, so we're getting four divided by six. So each one of these divisions is two-thirds of an inch, which Thirds, that doesn't make any sense because I've got a quarter pitch lead screw, a one over four lead screw, and why is anything in two thirds of anything else? So every other manual I've seen for this lathe shows this as, a, as an eight position dial. And there's a table down here which you can't see, but that also references eight positions. So this little plate here, which just comes undone with that little screw, is wrong because there's no way it should have six divisions with a four one and four screw it just none of it makes any sense so this dial i'm going to make a new face plate for that but now on to how the threading dial actually works so how does the threading dial actually work on the lathe well my threading dial we mark out four inches on here that's one inch to half an inch that's another full inch it's a half an inch just mark this out for four inches now my threading dial will engage my th this is a label however you want this is one inch two inches, three inches, four inches, that's what the space is. So my threading dial, my threads would be here. One, two, two, two. These are my fixed intervals that I can engage the, the lead screw at. You can't change those, those are fixed. So what are we doing really when we're threading? We're attaching our carriage to our lead screw, we're moving it along, and it's relative to the rotation of the head. So if we're gonna cut a quarter 
or four threads per inch, or a thread every quarter of an inch. We would just need to directly attach, same gear ratio, the spindle to our leaves screw to our carriage and have it just move along to get four threads per inch. And then we would need a threading dial because all we'd be cutting is four threads per inch which lined up to our lead screw. Now, we don't want to make lots and lots of different lead screws for every single size of thread we make, so we have gears we can put in to slow down this lead screw. So if we make it go half as fast, we will cut um, an eighth of an inch, or eight threads per inch, or an eighth of an inch per thread. So you go one over eight, two over eight, three over eight, four over eight, five over eight, six over eight, eight over eight. Okay, seven over eight. Seven over eight, eight over eight. So if we look along here, well, two over eight, that's a quarter. Four over eight, that's a half, which is the same as two over a quarter. So this is working out that every, uh, this is working out that we could just engage anywhere because these numbers, well, we can't engage at three eighths of an inch because it, it would, there's no tooth there, it wouldn't hit. So that's fine, we can engage there. But what about, um, say, nine threads per inch? One over nine, because that would be each thread is a ninth of an inch wide if you do nine threads per inch. So one, oh, sorry. 2 over 9, 3 over 9, 4 over 9, 5 over 9, 6 over 9, 7 over 9, 8 over 9, 9 over 9. Now, we do 9, none of these line up until we get to the very end, which is 9 over the 9, which is, which equals to 1 which is also divisible by four. So if we're gonna cut nine threads per inch using a quarter pitch lead screw, we would need to engage it every whole inch. We could engage it and it would line up. Now what about say a sixth of a thread per inch? One over six, six threads per inch. Two over six, three over six, four over six, five over six, six over six. Well, in this case, six over six, that's, that's not anything related to a quarter. Three over six though, wait, that's the same as a half. And that is definitely, uh, up here, we can definitely do a half because that's two over four and then goes along and then we get six over six, which equals one. So if we're doing anything divisible by two, we can engage it every um, half an inch along the lead screw. If we engage it here at a quarter, well, a quarter is somewhere in between, um, somewhere between one sixth and two sixths and it's, gonna come out wrong, we're gonna cut on top of each other. It's, it's not gonna work. So we would need to engage it at the half inch marks. Now, that seems like, why would we need to divide this whole, why would the threading dial need to span a whole four inches then if any thread pitch can be put in within a one inch span? Well, the problem is somebody decided that it was a good idea to do thread pitches like one, like two and a half threads per inch, which is one over 2.5 thread width, which is, that's an annoying thing. So let's multiply this by two. So we get rid of this fraction down there because they don't like decimals over decimals mixed in with fractions, that's annoying. So this would be two over, sorry, 
5. Right, that's the same thing. So now if we keep adding 2 over 5's, then we would get 4 over 5, um, 6 over 5, 7 over, no, not 7 over 5, 8 over 5, and then finally 10 over 5, and that equals 2. 10 over 5 is 2, and so if we're doing any pitch with a point 0.5 in it, we would need to engage every full two inches. So if we could do it at this mark, and then two inches later, then two inches later. We could engage here, and then do a two inches later to there, but that could get confusing to which mark you want to do. But every two inches, this will line up with our quarter inch lead screw. But still, we've got four inches to deal with. Well, what if somebody decided that they wanted to cut two and a quarter threads per inch, two point um, two five? Well, that is the same as multiply both the top and the bottom by four, ends up being four over nine. Well, that's an annoying thing, but we keep adding them up. There we go, eight over 9, 12 over 9, um, that be 16 over 9, 20 over 9, still not working out, and we go 24 over 9, that's still not right, And but wait, 20 8 over 9. 28 is divisible by 9, which is 4. So, 28 over 9 is 4, so that means that if we're dealing with a 1 over, if we're doing 2.25 or anything in the quarter pitches, fractionals, threads per inch, like two and a quarter threads per inch, which is obnoxious, then we would need to engage every full four inches. So, that's why my threading dial spans a full four inches when we, when we move it along. Now, my threading dial dividing into six segments makes zero sense because we've got our full thing and we're dividing it and those dividing four by six doesn't even line up with our lead screw. So I have, my dial doesn't, there's times when, well I can sh I'll just show you <laughs> over there. <clears throat> Let's take a close look at my threading dial and why this doesn't work being six, another reason why. So this is pretty neatly lined up with the one there. Now I can move along and engage it there. That looks kind of like it's halfway in between the one and the two, but that's a, that's the next time this will drop will let me drop in. It's, I don't. So moving along drops in there, just about at the one. Move along, this drops in just about in between the two. That makes sense. And then now one more thread. Well, that's not quite at the two. And that one's past the two, and there's no, so I can't engage it at the two mark anyways. I can engage it close to the one in between, and then that's about at the one. And then if I go back, that's on the other side of the one, well, that's at the one. So anyways, so that's at the one. Yeah, that sort of looks halfway in between, but now that's right before the two and that's right after the two. So that doesn't make any sense. Like I can't engage it on the two mark anyways. And why is that? Well, because two thirds of an inch is not <laughs> divisible. So really I'm engaging it at a quarter of a revolution of my threading dial. And then another 
halfway around it will engage there at the same spacing as what the one did so this threading dial is 